if I told you that one of the most secure nuclear facilities on the planet was crippled by something as ordinary as a USB stick? It sounds impossible, right? But the truth is crazier than you think. And the scariest part? This could happen anywhere, at any time. How could something so small bring down something so powerful? And more importantly, how could no one see it coming? To understand how it all happened, we need to go back to the beginning, as early as 2007, long before that innocent-looking USB stick was ever plugged in. Imagine a highly secure nuclear facility, buried deep underground in the deserts of Natanz in Iran. This place was so protected that it was completely cut off from the internet. No one could hack into it, or so it was believed. While the plant workers were confident in the security, a hidden enemy was already inside their system, waiting for the right moment to strike. This heavily guarded facility had the world's attention. Something critical was happening inside, something that made powerful nations nervous. But instead of launching an attack, a different plan was set in motion. It wasn't a bomb, and it wasn't an army. It was something far more unexpected. What unfolded next changed the face of warfare forever, all without a single soldier crossing enemy lines. This is the story of Stuxnet, the most advanced cyber weapon the world had ever seen. Stuxnet was no ordinary virus. It wasn't designed to steal information or cause temporary problems. It was far more dangerous. Experts believe that the development of Stuxnet took years. It contained over 15,000 lines of code, crafted to perfection by a team of elite hackers. Unlike typical viruses that target computers, Stuxnet targeted something far more important. Programmable logic controllers, PLCs. PLCs are devices used to control machinery, and in the case of Natan's nuclear facility, they controlled the centrifuges responsible for enriching uranium. The Stuxnet virus used four secret flaws to carry out its mission, also called zero-day vulnerabilities, in the software that controlled the machines at the plant. These flaws were unknown to the software makers themselves, making Stuxnet almost impossible to stop. Zero-day vulnerabilities are particularly dangerous because they are unknown to the software's developers meaning no one has created a fix for them yet. Additionally, Stuxnet used two stolen digital certificates to sign its drivers, making the malware appear legitimate and bypass security measures. Stuxnet exploited these flaws to avoid detection and remain hidden for as long as possible. Stuxnet didn't rush. Once it was inside the system, it watched. It studied how the machines worked, waiting for the right moment to strike. Natanz was protected by an air gap. This means its computers weren't connected to the internet, making them very hard to hack remotely. However, Stuxnet was designed to spread in multiple ways, including network shares and specific vulnerabilities in Windows operating systems. So, how did Stuxnet actually get in? Here's where the story takes a spectacular twist. The virus was carried into the super secure facility by something as simple as a USB stick. A bunch of USB sticks were likely spread by undercover agents in strategic places like cafes, conferences, or even parking lots where workers from the nuclear facility would be present. It could have been picked up by a worker or even brought in by accident. Once plugged in, Stuxnet quietly spread through the network, infecting the computers that controlled the facility's machines. What's even more fascinating is that the exact root of the USB stick remains a mystery. It's possible that it was introduced into Natanz by an unaware contractor or worker, showing how easy it is to compromise even the most secure facilities without direct physical access. Once inside, Stuxnet spread stealthily, targeting specific Siemens controllers used in the plant's centrifuges. It specifically targeted Siemens Somatic Step 7 software, which is used to program PLCs by modifying Step 7 project files to insert its malicious code. To stay hidden, it only activated when it detected the exact environment and configuration it was designed to attack. This made the virus almost invisible to security systems. Stuxnet also concealed its activities, ensuring 
ensuring that neither antivirus software nor plant operators could detect the malicious behavior. It didn't raise any alarms whatsoever, but deep inside the facility, Stuxnet was preparing to sabotage the plant's operations in a way never seen before. Stuxnet's goal was simple, cause damage without being noticed. But how would this be achieved? It did something very clever. It started changing the speed of the centrifuges, the machines that enriched uranium. Centrifuges are delicate machines, spinning at extremely high speeds to separate uranium isotopes. Any small change in their speed could lead to catastrophic failure. The virus would subtly increase and decrease the speed of the centrifuges, causing wear and tear over time. These erratic changes placed immense stress on the machines, eventually leading to their breakdown. First, it would speed them up and slow them down over and over. This kind of stress would eventually cause the machines to break down. But here's the genius part. Stuxnet made sure that the workers saw no signs of trouble. The observers were fed false information, fake news, everything looked normal on their screens. Stuxnet achieved this by manipulating the data sent to Siemens WinCC, the monitoring system, to display normal operating conditions despite the malicious changes it was making to the centrifuges. Day by day, the machines were being destroyed, but no one had a clue why. Before we dive into the story of Stuxnet and the terrifying power of cyber weapons, let me ask you something. Have you ever wondered who's out there collecting your personal information online? Your name, address, phone number, credit details, it's more than you might think. Even if you're careful about what you share, your data could be sold by brokers or leaked in a breach and you wouldn't even know it. I recently did a search and was stunned by how much of my personal data was floating around, being bought and sold without my permission. But here's the good news. There's an easy way to take control. I've been using Hogo, today's sponsor, to keep my personal data safe. Hogo is a privacy and money management app that's all about safeguarding your information, protecting your credit, and helping you get rewarded while doing it. With Hogo, you can literally swipe to remove your data from shady broker sites that are selling your info. You get to see exactly what kind of personal information is being sold, and with just a swipe, you can put a stop to it. And it doesn't end there. Hogo also helps you tackle issues on your credit report, like late payments. With the push of a button, they even offer a personalized plan to boost your credit score. And on average, users see an increase of 62 points in just 30 days. And here's the part I love. Every time you take action to protect your privacy or improve your credit, Hogo rewards you with Hogo coins. You can exchange those coins for gift cards to places like Amazon, Taco Bell, and more. It's like getting paid to protect yourself. If you want to manage your credit, protect your privacy, and earn rewards for doing it, check out the link in this video's description or scan the QR code on screen. Start your free trial trial today and turn smart credit and privacy moves into gift cards you can use right away. For months, Stuxnet continued its attack, causing chaos inside the plant. But in 2010, cybersecurity experts noticed something strange. A company in Belarus found a virus that was behaving in ways they had never seen before. Virus Blockada, a small cybersecurity firm in Belarus, first discovered Stuxnet when it noticed unusual behavior in a random customer's computer. At first, they believed it was a new type of malware, but further investigation revealed that it was much more than that. The virus was extremely advanced, targeting not just ordinary systems, but very specific industrial equipment. Stuxnet's complexity shocked experts. It wasn't just infecting computers, it was interacting with physical systems, something unheard of at the time. Its use of multiple zero-day exploits, stolen digital certificates, and specialized attack sequences demonstrated a level of sophistication that indicated a nation-state effort. This discovery marked the first first instance of malware being used as a weapon to destroy real-world machinery. By the time Stuxnet was discovered, it had already damaged hundreds of centrifuges, setting back Iran's nuclear program by years. But that wasn't the only consequence. The damage caused by Stuxnet was significant. Reports indicated that Stuxnet had destroyed nearly 1,000 centrifuges, crippling Iran's ability to produce enriched uranium at its usual pace. The targeted destruction of centrifuges was achieved without triggering any any immediate alerts, allowing the malware to cause maximum damage over an extended period. It was a setback that Iran would take years to recover from. However, the global impact went beyond Iran. Stuxnet opened the world's eyes to the possibility of cyber weapons. It demonstrated that critical infrastructure, power plants, water systems, and even hospitals could be vulnerable to similar attacks. Who was behind this incredibly powerful virus? Though no country has officially taken responsibility, all signs point 
to the US and Israel as the creators of Stuxnet. This suspicion is supported by evidence, such as the use of stolen digital certificates linked to these nations and public acknowledgments by officials indirectly referencing the operation. This was likely part of a secret operation to slow down Iran's nuclear program, codenamed Operation Olympic Games. This joint US-Israeli operation aim to stop Iran's progress through non-traditional means by targeting Iran's nuclear infrastructure with Stuxnet. The countries hope to delay Iran's efforts without the need for open warfare. But here's the bigger question. Could Stuxnet have been the first of many? If a virus like this could be created once, who's to say it hasn't happened again? Or that a more dangerous one isn't already being developed? The story of Stuxnet didn't end with the discovery of the virus. In fact, the repercussions of this cyber attack are still being felt today. Stuxnet marked the beginning of a new age in warfare, an age where battles could be fought not with soldiers and bombs, but with lines of code. In the wake of Stuxnet, nations began investing heavily in cyber defense and offense capabilities. Stuxnet wasn't just a one-off attack, it was a demonstration of what was possible. It was a warning. Many countries feared they could be next, vulnerable to attacks on their power grids, water systems, or other critical infrastructure. Governments worldwide scrambled to boost their cybersecurity efforts, recognizing the need to protect against similar sophisticated cyber threats. Meanwhile, Iran, after being caught off guard, doubled down on its own cyber capabilities, ensuring that it would never be this vulnerable again. In fact, Stuxnet triggered a cyber arms race. Countries like China, Russia, and North Korea began aggressively developing their own cyber weapons, inspired by the effectiveness of Stuxnet in disrupting enemy infrastructure. They were preparing for the day when they might need to defend against or launch their own Stuxnet Stuxnet-style attack. Stuxnet changed everything, but it also left us with many unanswered questions. How many other viruses like Stuxnet have been created but never discovered? What happens when a more sophisticated and deadly cyber weapon is unleashed? And most importantly, are we truly prepared for the next attack? What Stuxnet proved is that no infrastructure is completely safe, not even one protected by an air gap, as seen at Natanz. But perhaps the biggest question of all, will the next Stuxnet-like attack come from a nation or a rogue group of hackers? And will the world be able to stop it in time? The idea that a simple USB stick could bring down critical systems anywhere in the world haunts cybersecurity professionals to this day. Stuxnet's ability to infiltrate air gap systems through simple USB sticks showed a critical vulnerability in even the most secure environments. The power of Stuxnet showed that in the modern world, even the smallest device can become the deadliest weapon. Stuxnet was more than just a computer virus. It was the first of its kind, an invisible weapon that changed the world of warfare forever. A small USB stick, unnoticed and seemingly harmless, had the power to disrupt an entire nuclear program, all without a single bullet being fired. Its legacy is both impressive and scary, a triumph for those who sought to prevent a nuclear threat, but a warning to the rest of the world about the dangers of living in a hyper-connected age. The successful deployment of Stuxnet demonstrated the potential of cyber weapons to achieve strategic objectives without traditional military engagement. The stakes have only gotten higher since Stuxnet, and the cyber battlefields have only grown more dangerous. The question is no longer if, but when the next cyber weapon will be deployed, and whether the world will be ready for the chaos it brings. Stuxnet wasn't just a virus, it was a glimpse into the future. A future that is our present. A time where wars are fought with keyboards, and the most dangerous weapon of all is some lines of code.